Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week, as always, is... Bonjour, Namio. What? And this week, oh shit. Oh shit! Somebody, somebody got shot. Dude, we know. This got real, bitch. <laughs> oh yeah, with Luke skulking around, making the veiled threats that nobody realizes he's making because, well, nobody, for whatever reason, nobody suspects him except for like fucking Ned. <laughs> and even Tracy doesn't suspect him because, hi, you know, she's. I guess she's too wrapped up in something. The only way she can get away with it. It, you know, writing-wise, is if Tracy knows and she has something up her sleeve. That's the only way the writers can get away with her being, act, you know, acting this way. That's I don't know. See, I, 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 I'm having a hard time uh, kind of being down on Tracy because, I mean, whoever's wearing Luke's face, he is good at manipulating her. I mean, like fucking Rembrandt. I mean, he, he knows where all of her buttons are, and he knows how to push them just right to make her trust him implicitly. It's it's actually rather amazing. Yeah, but I don't know. I just don't like... I guess I just don't like seeing Tracy in this kind of a position where she is easily manipulated and easily pushed around like this. It's like, yeah. okay. Okay, writers, writers, writers. You've got to have a plan for she has got to be. She's got to have something up her sleeve, I think. I hope so, but I I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. I mean, especially when you can still go back and be with you know you know be all lovey dovey with Luke after he threatens your son with death. Oh, but he explained that away, and I'm just like I Kurt and. Of course, it might. Okay, so let me try that sentence again. <laughs> Whoever is wearing Luke's face is a moron. I mean, he sucks at this. He is. You know, I, I, I'm gonna. I realize I just complimented his his skill, but like, he goes back and forth between being this master manipulator and just being really, really stupid about his decisions because. I'm sitting here going, okay, what was the plan if he shot Ned and then Tracy walked in? Yeah. He may not have even had a plan when Tracy walked in and with a gun at Ned, you know? Yeah, and see, that's the thing. Like, he keeps making these impulsive, stupid fucking decisions. Like, okay, one of the things this week, I guess it was also a little bit last week, but, you know, he got all pissy because Julian said that he wanted to quit and his solution is that he's going to go after one of, you know, a member of Julian's newfound family. And I'm like, okay, this is a stupid plan. I don't know if it's going to work or not because this is a general hospital where everybody sucks. But the plan is to murder someone that Julian loves expecting that to make him fall back in line. And I'm sitting here going, Julian is the only one around here who knows who you really are and knows how to get to you. What the fuck is to stop him from coming up and shooting you in the fucking face? That is very true, because uh, it's like Luke doesn't necessarily keep guards around him. He yeah, doesn't, he doesn't keep people around him like Julian does, like Sonny he, does. In he fact, can't keep people around him because that would blow his cover. Exactly, and the one guy that he did hire to to go and shoot up the art gallery. And oh, I say shoot up. It was one silenced shot. Yeah. Um, which incidentally, he looks a lot. He looked a lot like LC, if you know who he is. I uh, I know the name, but I don't think I've actually seen his face. Uh, if you watch Center Radio, LC, the host, the the gunman looked eerily similar to him oh and now he's dead <laughs> yes and he's di- and, and he got offed by luke which again that moment was 
okay, I understand, you know, you don't want any witnesses or, or you, you don't want to tolerate failure. Uh, that, you know, that's tough mob world stuff. I understand that. Well, then maybe don't send your assassin to a public place to do his assassinating. This is true. Uh, but, you know, hey, it's, it's, it is what it is. But he it, still failed. He was he, yeah. the, his target did well, not sir. die. But at the same time, he, the message apparently got across because Julian is now scared shitless, not for him, but for his family. Yeah. Because I think what might be going through Julian's brain right now is that okay, if I escalate this, if I start going after Luke like this, he could target other members behind my back, because Luke is gonna know. You know, all the stuff that Julian or anybody else would hit. And Luke, if he is not discovered and put away rather quickly, and, and I say Luke, but, you know, fake Luke. Yeah. So if he's not dealt with or put away or what have you rather quickly after somebody goes after him, then Alexis could be shot, Sam could be shot, Silas could be shot, which, you know, you know um, 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 or, or Felix could be shot. Well, I mean, we've already had Lucas shot. Yeah. Mm. Except, yeah. <laughs> but again, Julian has the access. He could just walk up, shoot the dude in the head. You yeah. know, he could fucking do it in public. Because, like you said, fake Luke doesn't have guards around him. Mm hmm. But. Who knows who else this fake Luke knows? For all we know, he could be something, somebody that has more access than we've seen. For all I know, it could be some, it could be a mask, it could be a Cassidyne masquerading as Luke. For all we know, now wouldn't that be a hell of a twist? <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, Victor Cassidyne is in charge of the WSB, so you never know. Yeah, you never know who he gave his magic masks to. Exactly. I mean. Eh? Oh, Lordy. Somebody – I've seen people speculate that it's actually Jerry Jacks, and it's like, no. I, I, that I wouldn't – No, yeah. that difference. Well, I don't I don't know. They, they, they don't seem to have particularly cared thus far about height difference between the actors wearing the magic masks. So maybe that's part of the mask is that it makes you taller. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think – uh, oh God, Lee, uh, Obrecht and Anna weren't they? Aren't they about the same height? Oh. Around the same height, but it's not like they did anything to like cover it up when Obrecht was wearing the Anna mask. Yeah. Oh Lordy. <laughs> yeah, Anna's also significantly thinner than Obrecht's. Yeah. How you? How do you cover that up, Obrecht? Come on. Uh, but putting on a mask made her skinnier, so, you know, magic. Yes. Uh, of course, with... Now, of course, we, we question it because, well, that's how it looks. But I bet you if they had a better budget or what have you, they could probably work a little bit of better magic. You know, that, that's one of those things. It's a little nitpicky behind-the-scene thing for me. Yeah. But And then we wouldn't be bitching about it so much. Then it would be... Lisa Lobrecht's body with a face that looks exactly like Anna, you know. And then every and that wouldn't fool anybody because they'd be like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would work if it was somebody that hadn't seen Anna in a while. That's true. Well, and uh, I don't know. The MythBusters actually had an, uh, an episode where they um, they tested that idea. I don't know if you've seen it with where, where they did the the latex mask. And uh, to see if they could fool people. And basically uh, what they found was, uh, and, and now obviously these weren't the, you know, magic ones that adhere fully to your face and change you completely and also change your voice. But basically what they found was that uh, as long as people weren't like looking really closely, like if it was just uh, someone they, you know, saw out of the corner of their eye and didn't, you know, didn't stand out. It, the masks really did work, but once people like looked at you know the face and were and like started paying attention, yeah, then it stopped working. Yeah, so it's almost like a perception filter effect. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Interesting. How interesting that that that's like tech crossover between real life and General Hospital and Doctor Who. <laughs> dun dun dun. I like yeah. this. Yay. Oh, uh, but we we. We, we have not talk, talked about the biggest thing about this week. 
besides, you know, Luke getting really, really dark, even darker. I mean, he is willing to kill who, who is who is essentially supposed to be his nephew. Yeah. It's like, dude, do your research. You're killing your nephew. Hello? He almost got caught by, by Bobby, too. Yeah. Somehow she didn't see him. I, I guess the way he was standing, it could have been obscured. That's, you know, understandable. While Luke was doing this, or at least trying to do this, I'm sitting here thinking, those things usually have alarms on them. Yes. You would be correct. Yeah. My my mom, who is a, a nurse and who is, you know, worked in the ICU, um, was was sitting right here. And she actually called bullshit right away because she's like, the second he started trying to uh, cut off the airflow, alarms would have been going off everywhere. The al- alarms in hospitals are actually pretty sensitive. And they can, you know, have false alarms all the time because they're they're that sensitive. And so, yeah, the the fact that, you know, nothing happened. And and I was thinking about it, and I'm pretty sure that when Ava tried to do the same thing to AJ uh, in the exact same room, um, I'm pretty sure the um, stuff he was hooked up to at least made noises. Yeah. So... I maybe they just forgot <coughs> to put those. Maybe they just forgot to put those sound effects in post production. Who knows? Maybe, or it could be something different, or it could just be a faulty thing. They 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 they, sh- they need to find a way in universe to explain this. <laughs> oh dear. Now, we didn't even talk about like the setup to Lucas getting shot. Yeah. And... Sorry that that's me. <laughs> no, I, I, no, that's kind of <laughs> it's kind of on me too. But uh, Julian is going around and saying, you know, after telling Luke, hey, you know what? I'm walking. I know all your shit. I'm walking. Fuck you. That sort of thing. And he tells Lucas, he tells Sam, he tells Alexis, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to plan this dinner. I got this big surprise. Bring a plus one. You know, and of course, Sam brings Silas and Lucas just out of the blue asks Felix. And Felix is, takes a little bit of convincing, but he finally goes, you know, and... Well, Felix is the only other gay character. So. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> as far as we... That's, yeah. Yeah, they could they could, you know, change something up, mm-hmm. retcon somebody. Well, not, That's not even, a possibility. Doesn't even have to be retcon cuz sexuality is fluid enough to where it's like okay, I'm now realizing that maybe I could have sexual affection for a man or or some kind of romantic affection for a man doesn't have to be sexual. <laughs> Sorry, that that makes me think of uh Michael trying to fake having a sexual awakening for Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's just poor Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> the kid is going through hail. He keeps going through hail. Oh, that's why he has a Break the Cutie entry on TV Tropes. Because <laughs> that's it. that is Michael's life right there. Yep. No, it's going to say on his grave, Michael Corinthos III, Break the Cutie. Oh, but yeah. So everybody's gathered at the art gallery for dinner, and then and then the LC look up and comes and shoots him. Well, shoots yep. Lucas. And the whole setup between the two of them, Lucas got this folder with all three of the t- potential targets: Alexis, Sam, Lucas, and Luke. <laughs> he's almost caught by Lulu because she, yeah. she comes upon them talking, and he's he, he manages to cover his ass, saying, "Oh, he's my travel agent. Why would you meet a travel agent in a park?" What yeah, the fuck? and Lulu even calls him on that, and he manages. He still manages to explain it away. Yeah, and then, then very, very noticeable, very noticeable point. He blanks on Dante's name. Luke, as far as I know, as far as I've seen with between him and Dante. He's at least remembered his name. And that's kind of, you know, if that's not red flagging Lulu, I don't know what else is. Because, hello, he's your son-in-law, Luke. You should remember well, his name. I'm waiting for uh, Lulu to see a picture of the hitman and recognize him as the guy she saw Luke with. Oh, yes. That is that actually is something that slipped my mind. <laughs> it's like, wait, Lulu did see him. Oh, shit. <laughs> Which is something that not Luke should have thought about. But again, 
everybody sucks, and he is no exception. Yeah. It's like, what the hell they do to you? What what, what the hell? Uh, but yeah. Oh, Lordy. But spe- yeah, but speaking of that uh, conversation with Lulu, uh, because everybody sucks, Lulu, Lulu divulges confidential police information that she shouldn't fucking have in the first place because Dante shouldn't have told her but yeah. because everybody sucks anyway uh, yeah that's so the kind knows- of stuff that's the kind of stuff you wait until after the bust goes down because the drug bust happened thank you to whoever gave Duke the information yeah. Drug bust and, went down. They got Julian. They still got Julian and put him in in jail for it, even though but, Julian wasn't there. But you know, what legalities and all of that. And Julian is is it's like the writers remembered. Oh yeah, Julian has supposed to have the DA in his pocket, and he uses that to get himself out of jail. Indeed, he does. Scott doesn't look happy about it, but he's like, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Hmm. Black, but yeah, no blackmail, but, blackmail. But yeah, like I said, because Lulu sucks, uh, you know, she she flat out tells him, you know, that uh Julian Jerome's drug operation is getting raided that night. Uh but luckily she tells him too late for him to do anything to stop it. Uh yep. and so Anna gets there and arrests a whole bunch of people. Uh, including Jordan. Yeah, well, Anna's not at the docks initially. It's Nate and, and uh, Dante. Anna's going. Anna went after Julian herself. Yeah. So everybody's there, and Jordan is like, I'll, I'll only talk to the commissioner, that sort of thing, that sort of blah, 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 blah. So Anna gets down there, and it turns out that Jordan is DEA. I think somebody called that. Yeah, I think a lot of people called that. Yeah, I I, I want to say you called that at some point. That like she it's was possible. Working, she was working undercover or something. It's like, yeah, a lot of some people didn't see that coming. Some people were like, holy shit, really? But you know, hey, I was like, okay, good. You know, it it just. <laughs> well, not, nothing can be straightforward in this show. Of course not. Uh, but uh, you know, Jordan is really upset with Anna. Because she, you know, with Julian stepping aside, she was poised to meet the the uh, the big boss, who is who she's actually after. Mm-hmm. And Anna busting her kind of fucked that up completely. And uh, you know, Anna's like, yo, Anna doesn't believe her at first, but calls her supervisor, who apparently is someone that Anna knows, and gets the whole story. And uh, then Anna is pissed because, you know, Jordan didn't come to her and say, hi, I'm an undercover officer. Uh, don't mess with, you know, don't don't get in the way of my organization. <laughs> and that's when Jordan tells her that the reason nobody put her in the loop, put Anna in the loop, is because uh, her association with Duke Lavery has made her suspicious. Yeah, that that's biting her in her bony ass, isn't it? Yeah. Even though Duke, once everything went down with Julian, Duke went to Sonny, said, hey, you know what, I want out, they shared a drink, and they left on good terms. Seems a little too easy, but, you know... Well, what's going to bring Duke back in is going to be the fact that Julian hasn't been taken down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's obviously coming, uh, but, you know, but it, I, I think that the purpose of that was more to uh, kind of contrast uh, the two mob bosses' styles, because mm-hmm. uh, uh, not Luke can't stand the idea of anybody leaving him. To the point where he's going to kill someone you love if you try to leave. And yeah. then he's like, you know what? I wish you well. Let's stay friends. Yeah. Have and a drink. There you go. And, you know, for all for all the bitching I do about Sonny, for as much as I don't like the character, there there are good points. And I am, I am a big enough man to point them out, and that is one of them. Yeah. 
So, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> and this brings us to Carly and Franco and Spinelli! Yee! And Ellie! Yee! Yes, Ellie. Ellie and Spinelli. Ellie is awesome. Yes, she is. She is awesome. Uh, and she is uh, gorgeous. She she spent most of uh, her appearance this week being freaked out by Franco. <laughs> yes, and, and just tossing little barbs at him. <laughs> yeah. And so what happens when you get you, when you get Carly and three awkward people in a room together? Because you know that that Ellie and Spinelli they 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 have the little awkward charm going on. And so does Franco. Because mm-hmm. they finally made it to Portland, and and while Spinelli's working his magic, you know they catch up, do different his things. His literal magic, where he can somehow restore an audio file without ever listening to it. Yeah, I don't know how that happens, but. That's that is called magic. Yes. <laughs> oh God. So yeah. <laughs> so we get that, and they send them out of the room so they can hear the recording. And sure enough, the recording has has it basically confirmed that Ava killed Connie. And they they get the recording. Spinelli, you know. Works his magic again, gets it backed up for them, emailed to them on a, you know, give them to a flash drive. It raced completely off of his system, so, you know, nobody can come and look in his computer. It raced completely off of AJ's phone. Yeah, that too. So, so everything is all nice and good there. And they go back to Port Charles, and of course, Carly and Franco, they, they bicker about what to do with the information, and Franco at first is like, we'll just give it to Anna. And with the with the amendment of just erase the last part where Sonny confesses to shooting AJ or where he yeah. shoots AJ, you know, and Carly's like, oh, we can't do that because it'll be found out. Which smart. Well, well, what what she said was, uh, if we do that, then Ava and you know Anna goes after Ava. Ava's gonna give up Sonny for AJ's murder mm-hmm. in exchange for a lighter sentence because Sonny is a much bigger fish. And Ava, and uh, that would be then she and she would win basically. Pretty much. So it it, it still would come out though. So, but then, but, uh, but then Carly, I think it was Carly who had the idea. Show it to Sunny. Yeah, and Franco, Ooh. I think it was Franco who was kind of against that idea at first because he's like, I don't actually want Ava to die. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, she's done some horrible things, and this is one of them, but don't necessarily want her to die just yet, you know, mainly because of Kiki. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, hi, she's not my daughter, but, you know, she, she's close and don't want her to be hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so, can't blame him there. And I, if I was him, I would probably be in a similar position. You know, a mindset. Just you know, yeah. Don't don't kill her. Just just get her locked up. Get her dealt with. Get her neutralized. And by the way, she is still on Sunny's island. And Sunny also knows what Sean told her that she shot Olivia. Granted, it was an accident, and she was aiming for Franco. But the fact remains, she sh- she still shot Olivia. So Sunny's hey. already pissed. Well, and, uh, you know, Sean came out with it, and he said, you know, the reason I didn't tell you sooner is because she threatened that if I told you, she would tell the cops about you killing AJ. Hmm. Yes, and And... it's a good thing she is on Sunny's Island. (laughs) Makes things a lot more convenient. She could go from just being there to be be held again, not against her will, really, but... You know, in safety to, uh, yeah, you my prisoner, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and everybody answers to me. It's it's a good thing he established that. Oh, dear. And just at the end of the week, Carly brings the flash drive to him, plugs it in, and they're getting ready to listen to it. And judging by the previews, they do. He hears everything. Oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that was that was that was a good cliffhanger. Yes, as cliffhangers go. <laughs> yes, Sunny is going to have another roaring rampage of revenge. I am going to enjoy it. 
<laughs> that is about the only good, you know, the, the the major good thing when it comes to Sonny is when he is got that righteous fury, and it's actually um, the word I'm looking for, um, not not uh, when it's actually justified. Yes, thank you. When it's mm-hmm. actually justified righteous fury, I will back him 100. percent Oh, absolutely. Especially in this case, it's like you you killed my 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 one girlfriend you shot my other one what the fuck both of them and childhood she, friends by the way and she's also the reason that olivier isn't speaking to him right now yeah so, oh i i guess i guess technically it's his own really that's the reason that olivia is not speaking to him right now but ava was part of it yes you know and 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 supposedly and the thing is they blame her for turning morgan against them it seemed to me like Morgan was mostly doing that on his own out of spite, and it was more, I guess, more Julian taking advantage of it than than Ava was. Uh, that's yeah, what it seemed I, to me. I don't know. Morgan popped up this week again, just long enough to be super whiny and guilt trip Sonny again, and then he left. Mm-hmm. Because right now, his only purpose is to be whiny and annoying and stupid. Yeah, because he, he had so much character development, and now we're going back here. God damn it. Yeah, yeah, got got to regress him, you know, really had him start to grow up with uh, helping Kiki out with the Luke situation and, you know, being all mature and being her friend uh, in spite of their past, and now he's back to being whiny piece of shit, so. Yeah. Yes, God damn it. And speaking... Well, I can't say whiny piece of shit, but because uh, his his anger and rage is also justified. TJ finds out what Sean knows about his mama. Yes. Uh, and, and he's naturally upset, so much so that when he finds his mother in jail, again, he doesn't know that his mother is working with the DEA. You well, first he, first he goes to the docks where he knows that a major – uh, drug bust has happened, which which yeah. was kind of stupid. Uh, stupid, but, but he uh, had that dumb luck. Yeah, yeah. But he sees his mom in handcuffs, and then later on, uh, he uh, goes to see her in prison because she had given him a new car for his birthday, which immediately raised TJ's eyebrows and John's eyebrows. With did you really just buy him? You know, where where did you get this money, basically? Uh, and, uh, you know, now that TJ, uh, found out about her, he's like, you know what, you bought this with drug money, and I don't want anything to do with it here, have the title back. Yeah, because, well, he couldn't give her the key, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately in this case, but, uh, yeah, and of course he turns to Molly, and they, they have their moments and everything, and it's just, ee, those two are adorable. <laughs> Uh, which leads a little bit to Rick and Elizabeth. They they you know they have their bonding moment for the week. You know they they talk about kids and all that stuff. I don't think much interesting happened with them. Just some bonding and looks yeah, like they're getting they, back to being a little closer. They, yeah, they they had you know a brief scene. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, Scott. So. The first thing that happened is uh, Lucy is waiting for Kevin in Kelly's, and Kevin comes there basically just long enough to tell her that he wants a divorce. Yeah. And then he leaves. And, and it's like, fuck yeah. yeah. I, I am I am on his side. I, I, I feel yeah, a little too. bad for Lucy because mm-hmm. of, you know, because now it's coming back and biting her in the ass, which is still justified, but you know, she's been trying to work and make it a little bit better, at the very least easing her conscience. But you know what? Uh, that's about as far as it goes, because, you know, it's now not just bit you in the ass, it has kicked it, and your ass is currently between here and um, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, that, there's little sympathy there. And even less sympathy for Scott, who keeps hounding her. Yes, he's he really... He really needs to leave her the hell alone. It's like, okay, you know what? If it's going to be wind up being the two of you together, it's going to wind up being the two of you together. Give the woman some space, you 
fucking asshole. Yes, please, dude. I mean, it doesn't help that Lucy, you know, runs out of Kelly's, happens to run into him, and he's comforting her. You know, forcefully because he, she tries to get away, and he basically like hangs on to her and won't let her go until she finally just gives up and collapses in a pool of her own misery. Yeah, that, that's the way to do it. Another thing that ended up happening, it's kind of small, and I know they're building up to it, but Silas got himself a uh, a set of flowers from somebody called me. Oh, yeah, well. Someone who obviously expected him to recognize their handwriting. Mm hmm And he didn't. No. Which... I know exactly who it is, cause, not because there's any spoilers or anything, but we actually saw her wake up a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I was wondering if it was Nina, but it's like, shouldn't the card say something like, I'm alive? You would think. Or, hey, uh, I just got out of my coma, want to chat? I like... <laughs> yeah. Why, 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 I miss you, love me. Unless, like, unless wherever Nina's being held, or for whatever reason, cannot know that she is communicating with Silas. But then how would she have sent the flower? She could have known somebody else at the hospital, or, or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I really course, don't I, I think there might be some sort of significance to the kind of flowers they were. Just, like, from the way they were talking about it, because uh, when all of them were sitting around uh, the dinner table at the gallery, um, someone asked Silas what kind of flowers they were. Uh, it was something like, uh, you know, if it's yellow roses or, so, you know, so if the, or carnations, they, that's, that's okay. But if it's, like, red roses, that means, you know, that, then you're in trouble. But weren't they <laughs> lilies? I think so. Because I was like, you know, I, I don't know exactly what kind of lilies, but the place you most often see lilies, or at the time I should say, is on Easter. Yeah, which that's past, so... Yeah, or, or, or you know, at a funeral. It's basically kind of like death and rebirth kind of thing. Hmm. Well, there, there's some, you know, possible case of symbolism right there. Symbolism. There uh, you go. No, oh, but uh, I was I was uh, just on um, Facebook and happened to uh, flip past uh, the the General Hospital discussion group page, and uh, someone brought up something that I have been wondering for a while now. Mm -hmm. Tracy has been sleeping with not Luke. Yeah. And she has slept with him before because she was married to him twice. Yeah. Has she not noticed? And and also, you know, before when Ulbricht was wearing the Anna mask, uh, there was like a seam down on her chest. Hmm. So what the shit, Tracy? Unless fake Luke is taken to, you know, having sex with his shirt on. Who the hell knows? Yeah. Unless it is an absolute lookalike. Because keep in mind, magic plastic surgery does happen, because when Julian was originally on the show, he was played by somebody Ooh. else. And the same that is a valid point. There's, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, there's also Jerry Jacks, because when he first came on the show, he was this kind of short, stocky, dark-haired Australian guy. And when he came back, he came back looking like Gordon Ramsay's brother. Yes. Yeah, the, I have to say, uh, plastic surgery hadn't occurred to me. I just assumed it was a mask. But if it was if it was someone who went to the trouble of getting plastic surgery to look and sound like Luke, mm. like seriously, why, why Luke? That is that is the million dollar question. It could be somebody who has a grudge against Luke, and wants to use Luke's face to take down his family, and but, his friends, but, but and the city that, he loves. <laughs> if uh, if this person went to the trouble of going through probably years of plastic surgery to do this, what was the plan for getting their hands on Luke and making the switch? They probably, they were probably waiting for an opportune moment. You know, hey, you know, Luke, Luke's a wily crap, 
a wily creature. He's usually good at, you know, staying out of trouble for the most part, sure. And then he ends up drugged and miscavage. Yeah, I mean, was that just a lucky break? I'm willing like, to bet it was either a lucky break or they were just waiting for, you know, like I was saying, waiting for the right moment, keeping their eye on him. And when they realize, oh, shit, we have a golden opportunity here. Well, I, <laughs> I guess considering it's Luke, like some crazy shit is bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, Luke goes off on adventures at least once a year. So, yeah, who knows what happens to him? I mean, last year he was captured by the Cassidines. This year he's in captivity somewhere else, obviously, because this cannot be the real Luke. Yeah. I mean, just just it cannot be. It isn't. That, that, that's all there is to it, really. There, there is not a single person left watching the show who actually who has been watching for any length of time mm -hmm. who actually believes that this is Luke. Yeah, no, no, not Luke. You know, no, the real Luke, yeah, he's a lovable rogue, he's a scoundrel, but he's not the kind of guy that would full a hitman full of holes in the middle of the park for failing to assassinate his nephew. You know, that that's not the kind of guy Luke is. Yeah, he's been in the mob, and sure, he's he was actually contracted to take a hit out on somebody at one point, which is when the the, the infamous rape happened, by the way. And I don't think he – I think he ended up not going through with it because of things and stuff, and so his buddy went through it, and he was practically killed, but he was really you know, brought back to life in the late 90s. But yeah, that, that's a whole complicated thing all on its own. Point He's is right. – yeah. yeah. Point is Luke, as we know him, just could not do that, and this kind of a – and if – and if they're actually going for this really drastic of a character change, which I doubt they are, then that would be just what the hell. And apparently well, like, this this guy that is masquerading as Luke has been working with Julian for years. Yeah, exactly. And and we cannot rule out a WSB involvement because who saved who who told Robert Scorpio to make sure Julian Jerome lived and made sure to cover it up and make it look like he died? The World Security Bureau. So they they have a hand in it somewhere. WSB, we suck balls. Something like that. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, we, we were we were good when we were introduced. We we weren't as effective, but one of our agents was there. Yeah, your agent didn't throw the fucking psycho into the ice chamber. It was some alcoholic yo know, nightclub owner from Port Charles. <laughs> He was the one who ended up saving your goddamn world and figuring out the goddamn password to shot down the weather machine so Port Charles could actually thaw out in time for winter. Where it froze again. <laughs> no. So let's see. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think we haven't quite covered um, the other big um, – uh, uh, so Oh, Maxi. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, sorry. Yes. I, I'm I'm losing nouns. Sorry. It's um, okay. No, there's, uh, there's yeah, some but that... Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, there, there's some there's some nouns in the ashtray over there, but yeah. uh, but Maxi, it, it's it's coming up on time. You know that that six months has happened, and that and the uh, the court is going to reevaluate Maxi and going to see if you know she can have visitation with her daughter with Spinelli. And at first, Maxie is like, oh, I don't want to. I've put that behind me. And Nathan just giving her a big, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yes. Because, I mean, there, there's getting past it, and then there's your fucking daughter. Yeah. Which apparently, it starts to, apparently start to get, get got through to her, because she did get the thing out of the trash can. Yeah. So so maybe Nathan's getting through to her a little bit there. And, and I have no idea how Levi is going to react. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully... Children of the devil, mate! Oh, God. I was like, it's your daughter. You have a right to know her. I hope he goes that way and supports <laughs> that. If, if he doesn't, then yeah. it's like, dude. You're vegan now. You can't have children. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> no, fuck that shit. Vegans have children all the time. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, the dumbest thing he could come up with. But that's in the past. That brings you pain. Yeah, but it's going to bring your daughter pain, not 
you know, making, you know, because, you know, the daughter, you know, Georgie is going to grow up and realize that mama didn't want me because I was a painful memory for her. What? That that's going to yeah, that's not traumatizing. You know. But as I said, you know, thanks to Nathan cuz Nathan is turning out to be pretty cool. Yes. So, you know, Maxi seems to be turning around I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that's that's going to be a good thing. Oh, and, and I yeah, and uh, oh, the uh, the other thing about Nathan this week is that he he was among those who found the hitman's body, and uh, brought it in, and Silas and Sam uh, identified uh, the body as the shooter, and like, uh, so so uh, Sam or not Sam, uh, Silas and and Nathan actually had like a few different interactions where they kind of like gave each other the kind of like the bro nod a couple of times of like, we're cool. Yeah. We're cool now. We're cool now. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Hey, you were manipulated by your, by your bitch kind of a mother. And well, I was the one that was, you know, taking the fall for it, but you know, Hey, can't really blame you too much. You were acting on false information. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Hey, you know, plus, you know, you, you're, you're, you're basically my brother-in-law. So, so it's like, yeah, <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> oh, what what else have we not covered this week? Because I feel like oh, I feel like we've the, went over a what, lot. And I found I found the noun. Uh, I was talking about the other cliffhanger uh, uh, yes. of the week was uh, so Scott Baldwin comes in and you know trades barbs with Anna and uh, goes in and sits down with Julian and Julian's basically like you fucking owe me. Uh, get me out of here so I can go see my son, or uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, tell everybody about uh, you blackmailing Lazaro. And Scott's like, Rah! God damn it! Uh, but he does it because he is, be- because he sucks, because everybody yeah. sucks, and he can't think of another way out of this. Um, for instance, the fact that Julian has no proof. Yeah. Mm. Like, if he decided, if he were to go to the press, it would be his word against Scott's, and considering that Julian is a fucking mob boss who just got caught with a buttload of cocaine, I don't think anyone's really going to take his word for much. No. I wouldn't but be- think they would, but then again, but, he does yeah. work with the media, and we see how media works in real life. So, yeah. But still, Scott Scott is stupid, and he sucks, so he rushes things and gets Julian out, uh, and Julian comes by the hospital just in time to see Luke inside trying to kill Lucas. For the second time. Yes, because the first time he got interrupted by Bobby... Mm-hmm. And then managed to get uh, get Alexis to squirrel away Bobby. Yeah. And... Although I did, I did like uh, not Luke's interactions with TJ a little bit. You know, it's like yeah, clearly whoever this is supposed to be has not been around. You know, like barely legal teenagers for a while. Oh, yeah, because we 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 forgot we forgot to talk about that because uh, last week the cliffhanger was. Luke showing up at Alexis's place with the gun. And so, you know, when we get to see it, he comes in and he's, and she's like, you know, uh, you know, to what do I owe this visit? And he's like, I'm here to kill you. And she's like, ha 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 ha. No, what are you really here for? And like, <laughs> he banters with her for fucking ever. And then like starts to fiddle with his gun so, of course, by the time he starts to getting around to fiddling with his gun, he he gets interrupted by TJ coming over, and he has to put the gun away because nobody can just fucking do something. They mm-hmm. have to sit and fucking dialogue or monologue. And that's why that's why he didn't kill, get, you know, succeed in killing Lucas, was because twice he had to fucking sit there and monologue rather than just getting the point. It's exactly like Ava trying to kill AJ, because she couldn't just go in there and fucking do it when she had the opportunity. She had to talk and 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 talk. And then finally get around to doing something just in time to be interrupted. Yeah, here's an idea. 
you know, if, if you're dead set on killing off a character, then have you know have the murderer or or whoever the killer is going to be do the killing while monologuing. That yeah. could work. That, that could that would make too much sense. Although it does make me think of that scene in Die Hard where uh, the bad guy is telling Bruce Willis, "If you get a chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. Just do it." And then Bruce Willis is like, "Okay, bang." <laughs> yes. Oh, but you gotta you gotta have the tension somehow. Although I, I am gonna say this, I, I may have said it on a previous show before, but one of the things, as much as I'm enjoying the show, one of the things I do want to see improve is the writing. You know, overall, I mean, there are obviously very good points that keeps us coming back naturally, mm-hmm. and the actors are all doing wonderful jobs of what they're given. The directing, yeah, I think the directing is okay. Yeah. So, so all that is fine. We just need to polish up the writing a little bit. Make it, make it a little bit more plausible in certain, in certain things. You have a universe here that works similar to the real world, but angels and vampires exist within it. Yeah. Yeah. And magic weather machines and magic masks. Yes, and and the power of science can freeze the world, and aliens can sometimes appear just. On Windermere, looking for the power of science compels you, sir. Yes, Uh. but you have all of this to work with, and and you know use it, use it, work with it, make it at least sound more plausible than what it is. You know, I mean, I mean, take for example Doctor Who. You know, it's fantasy, sci-fi, and it has stuff that obviously is never, you know, at least at this point, it's never going to happen. Like like being time sensitive or that kind of stuff. But they work within that to make it sound like okay. This isn't just something that's thrown at the wall to see if it sticks. This actually is something that could be plausible. You know, you know, it sounds like something that if you discover this sort of thing here, then it could work. And and Ooh, I know I'm taking techno babble sounds shiny. Yes, uh. pretty much. And and you know what? They they kind of accomplished that in the eighties with, with the Ice Princess, you know, freezing the world with all that techno babble. It if you sit there and think about it, it might sound plausible. At least plausible enough to where it doesn't sound like the writers are just throwing shit at the wall. But, you know. And I don't know, I took it in more of a sci fi direction there. Sci fi <laughs> fantasy direction, but but you know, I mean if if yeah. a character is supposed to be intelligent, play them as intelligent. Write them as more intelligent. Yeah, they're not gonna be perfect characters. You don't want a perfect character. But at least make them a you know make them more human, but also make them more believably human. Yeah, well you know. I, I don't I think the problem is that most of these characters have selective intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're smart when the writers need them to be, and they're dumb as shit the rest of the time. Yeah, and and that's where – that's honestly where the show's weakness is. It, it's like, okay, you have a character who is intelligent and makes a really goddamn stupid mistake that most characters, more, most people of that intelligence probably would not make in reality. And this is, again, going back to like the rules of the universe, it's – Based in our reality, obviously with some extra supernatural and science fiction-y stuff as well, but but in terms of the characters, these are human beings. They they have you know they have their stuff, and for the most part, the more emotional stuff, you know, that's written well enough. It's the motivation where it needs a lot of work. Yeah. It's like, okay, why are you doing this? Because of this. I mean, it's it's not bad enough to the point to where it's like, you know, the characters are doing it. They're not, you know, and the script says so. Whatever motivation the writers don't give, the characters, I guess, try and pick up on the slack for that and try and make it work. So that's that's why the, the actors who are on this show are just so damn awesome because they're doing their best with what they're given. And they're doing a damn good job of it. Indeed. So, so yeah, <laughs> it, it took however many episodes we're on now, and I'm I'm getting to like the big overall thing. Oh lordy, because because lately I've been I've been kind of looking at the show and it's like you know what this is basically an hour long review. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically what it is. Uh, yeah. and you know with a little bit of history, of course we have the plot synopsis. So we have the we make comments and jokes and snark about it as a little bit. And then you have this, so. (laughs) (laughs) 
but but again, if, if you you know pass this show on to the writers, say hey, here's what you guys can improve. Come on, I I know it's soap operas. I know the whole origin was you know, you know you know being there for the housewives to watch or what have you back in back in well in this case 63 where you know society was a different animal then and everything was sponsored by soap commercials cuz that's why we have the term soap opera is because these were used to be sponsored by soap commercials and well there's still a lot of soap commercials out there <laughs> oh well, I, I i watch i watch the show on hulu and it's interesting to see who the sponsors are for this show because they're all like quote unquote woman products. Uh, lots there, there was uh, initially a lot of uh, weight loss commercials until I like kept spamming the no, this is not relevant to me button. Mm -hmm. And that went away. Uh, I get the one for almond milk a lot. Oh, I've seen um, that one. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen that sometimes three times in a row. Oh wow! Uh, the, I get a lot of pet food commercials, which I always, I always say yes. This is relevant to me, so that I can see puppies and kitty cats uh, <laughs> in my commercial breaks. Uh, and then there's a lot of like shampoo and hair color commercials. But like lately, all of a sudden, out of nowhere. There are all of these commercials for baby products, like baby toys. Oh, dear. A aimed at young parents. And I'm like, so, so this, is, this is apparently what's, uh, what their target demographic is. Uh, you know, a suburban mom who uh, has a puppy and small children. Yeah. Which... And likes violence. Apparently. <laughs> And Very drinks much. almond milk. Yes. Which, you know, again, I, I, I'm, with, with the age of the internet, you know, this show and other shows like it. I mean, and this goes for, like, any of your daytime shows. You have the soap operas. You have stuff like The View and The Chew, all that, all of your daytime stuff. You can broaden the audience with the internet. I mean, for crying out loud, I, I, I have no shame in admitting that I have, like, a small, like, cheat sheet of sorts to help kind of jog my memory about what's happened during the week on the show. And I just go to iTunes because you can get these shows on iTunes, you know, well, at least for a limited time. And if you keep piling them up, it does get a little pricey, but at least because, you know, like, for example, the nurse's ball just recently happened. And I admit if I had a little bit of extra money to throw around, I would actually throw it at, at iTunes, throw it at ABC and be like, you know what? I'll keep I'll keep the nurse's ball because I love it. The musical numbers, the singing, the, the the everything around it is just you know pretty goddamn awesome. So, and plus, it is definitely safer than get, trying to get them off of YouTube <laughs> or somewhere else. <laughs> so, I mean, and they're guaranteed; they're great quality. You know what? What's not to like? Sure, you can watch them on Hulu for about two weeks. But at least yeah. if you get them off of iTunes, you get the best quality. Yeah, it's two bucks per episode. Whatever, you know, and it's going to support the show. And if everybody throws money at it, then maybe the show could have some better production values, maybe some maybe some some better writing because people are saying, hey, you know what? We actually have more of a vested interest in this and it's more than just whatever, although although there is at least a million people who like it, according to Facebook. So <laughs> so so there so it's not exactly a small fandom thing, if, yeah. you know, for that. But it could still grow. You could still, you know, spread out your demographic a little bit. You know? and, and yes, I know I'm asking this of a soap opera, and I know that's probably not the most logical thing to do. But, you know. So listen, listen up, General Hospital. You better improve your game because uh, suburban lactose intolerant housewives like Gomer deserve better. <laughs> we all deserve better. Oh. Uh. But again, that that is the thing, and I, and I'm sure it's probably similar for other soap operas. And what's kind of sad about it is it's not taken as seriously, I don't think, because I've I've talked to some other people on different things, and they're like, "Oh, you watch soap opera?" And it's like, "No." Then I break out the Ice Princess, and they're like, "Holy shit, really?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and then of course these are the same people that watch wrestling. Yeah, I you know more than one person has told me. 
that wrestling is soap operas for for guys. Yeah, when honestly, in this day and age of more more and more gender equality and, and all that, who's to say that it can't be for both? That both can't yeah. enjoy it. Hell, I know several women who will who will just go and flood my Twitter and Tumblr feeds with wrestling stuff. I see that too. Yeah, because like, I don't know. I I can't get into wrestling every time. I see, like, even a clip of professional wrestling. I just sit there and I go, you know what? I have literally seen gay porn that is less homoerotic <laughs> than professional wrestling. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know how anybody can like not see this. Uh, but <sighs> hey, you know, and hey, maybe they like the homoeroticism. May- you know what? All I ask is that they be honest about it. Like that, if you like the homoeroticism of professional wrestling, go for it. But don't pretend it's not there. For fuck's sake! Like that's that's all I ask. Yeah. But oh well. Uh, but at least with General Hospital, the only homoeroticism you'll get is between Lucas and now Felix. <sighs> I'm. Uh, <laughs> Which I'm is not bad. super happy about that. I. I don't know. Maybe maybe the pairing will grow on me, but I yeah. I didn't want that to be the default. I didn't want them both to break up with Brad and then immediately get together with each other. I I would have liked a little more complexity than that. I do still want Lucas to go back to Brad. <laughs> uh but uh, yeah, although like, like, Although from, yeah. from what I'm seeing and what I'm gathering from it, it's – the two of them are basically like, okay, you know, we're going on one date. We, we don't know if it's going to mean anything yet, so. We went on one date and one of us got shot, you know, like you do. Yeah. Although it uh, did kind of shock Felix into like, you know, grabbing his hand really quick and is like, oh, shit. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe, yeah, you know, tragedy brings people together. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so we are coming up to the end of the show, and we're going to wrap up for this week. Uh, if we wanted to find you on social media, Namio, where could we find you? You can find me on Tumblr. My Tumblr is Namio's Corner. You can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. You can find me on the fabulous ArchieGomer.com. <laughs> and you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Yay! And if you want to find me on the social medias, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And you can also find this show, along with my other podcasts, on iTunes. Just look up the Port Charlie podcast, and there you go. You will have this show. And if you're already listening it, listening to it on iTunes, hi! How you doing? <laughs> uh, hope, you're, hope you're enjoying the show. And if you like this show and if you like other shows that I do, the different productions that I do, the podcasts, the Let's Play videos, etc., and you want to help support the cause for new equipment, new studio space, whatever, then uh, you go ahead on over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx, and you can pledge however much you want a month. It could be as little as a dollar or, or however much, and it will go towards equipment. It will go towards you know, convention appearances too eventually if I get Sweet. enough. I would love to be able to do regular convention appearances, um, but can't really happen unless you know unless you guys pitch in because <laughs> gonna need it. <laughs> uh, and, and, and then now I, I, I sell I, I just totally sound, sound like an e beggar, but um, but no. And also yeah. if if you want to throw money at me, patreoncom slash gomer 21 double X is, is the place to do it. And also if you want some fabulous artwork or even a very, very fabulous animation from an award-winning animator, also known as Becky Hopkins, a.k.a. My Girlfriend, then Ooh. you head on over to her Patreon page, patreon.com slash beckyhop, and toss some money at her. You will get some art, and you toss enough money at her, she'll do a 30-second animation for you. <laughs> oh, so with that, that is going to be it for this week. I am looking forward to this next week, which it's going to be a shorter week because Memorial Day. Yeah. But you know what? That's fine. <laughs> oh. So we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the ranting thespian with Namio, signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.